Hey, how you doing? This is uh, Michael Snead again. We're uh, starting the business from scratch. Uh, I'm going to give you an update on how things are going with the business. Uh, for those that are just joining in, uh, my name is Michael Snead. I'm the owner of a couple of small businesses in Clayton, North Carolina. And for the last four or five months, uh, I've been just bringing everybody along from a business that I decided to start from scratch to show people how to create their own businesses. The business we started was a appliance uh, resale store. Uh, the name of it is Clayton Appliance Outlet. Um, we're located in Clayton, North Carolina. And today I'm coming at you again from my delivery truck, showing you the other end of it. Uh, we're actually in the middle of what we call tax season, where people now are starting to get their tax money from, um, from the government. So everybody is at the store buying appliances. Um, I'm out here almost every day picking up uh, picking up uh, more appliances, taking them to the store. We're refurbishing them. Uh, it's going full blast. Uh, actually, it's doing very well right now. Um, people kept telling us that this was the time to be in it, and I can see why, because uh, everybody's got their money, and it, it's, just, it's, just, uh, it's just really going well. Uh, today, I just want to give you an update on the store, on how things are going. What we decided we are going to do, we decided we are going to actually bring in uh, a little bit younger talent. Um, the problem that we've been having trying to hire folks uh, is that when we bring people in, some of the newer stuff that's going on today, uh, as far as with social media, uh, posting the Craigslist, a lot of the older crowd are not comfortable with doing that. They actually are, it seems like they are afraid of it. So we're bringing in a younger crowd who, who, who are actually more in, in, into doing stuff on social media, who won't mind putting a video up, who won't mind going on Facebook and actually uh, driving, driving sales from that, from that area. Uh, another thing that we've noticed from a lot of what we call the so-called millennials, people who are just getting out of college, people in their 30s, uh, uh, in their mid-20s to, uh, to like mid-30s, uh, I, I, I couldn't figure out what was the disconnect from us hiring them and when they come in their aspect of work and I was listening to a guy named Glennon Cameron and he decided he, he's been online he's been creating virtual businesses and he had physical business in the past and he decided he's gonna go back into the physical business space and he went out trying to hire people and he started noticing the same thing I was noticing saying hey something's wrong with, the, uh, with the, uh, the way people are coming looking for jobs and their their perceptions on what actually happens in a job. And what he found out is that a lot of people now are uh, looking at, uh, at places like Google um, and places like Facebook where they say, oh, when you go to work, they got pool tables in there, food, pews, ball, uh, you have company break rooms, everybody making $100,000. And they think that's the way work's supposed to be. That I'm supposed to go to work and it's supposed to be just like a big hangout and everybody's having fun. I'm going to make a lot of money. And uh, it's not much physical <laughs> labor involved in it. So he, he, he's noticed that too. And uh, that, that was, and until he said that, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't get the connection what was going on. But that's exactly what it is. I think a lot of people have a false perception on what actually happens in, at work with a corporate person. And, and what actually they, they read on places like Google, where the people who are working at Google and Facebook and places like that on the Silicon Valley, how they actually work. Because I, I actually read an article where they're saying the average engineer makes 125000 a year. And I was like, whoa, when did that happen? Because I, when I first got out of college and worked as an engineer, uh, my starting salary was like $36,000. And then the most I ever made was like maybe sixty thousand, uh, and and when I was leaving out the engineer, my actual salary was starting to decline back down to about forty five fifty uh, thousand. Because with so many engineers, the price wasn't going up; it was actually going back down. So I was actually surprised when I read the article. I said, "Man, engineers are making an average of one hundred twenty five thousand a year. That's, that's really good." And, but I I, 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 I I couldn't figure it out. I said, when I was leaving out the industry, it was going backwards. They were paying less money and require more work. So uh, maybe they, that's what they're doing. They're just looking at the people in Silicon Valley and they, they're basing everything, the numbers and, and uh, how things go out off of that. 
Well, anyway, like I said, we, we're in the process. We're bringing in younger talent. We're actually bringing in high school students. Um, today is going to be the first day. We're going to have like three high school students coming in, and they're going to come in, and they're going to uh, they're going to start posting on uh, uh, creating us our Facebook ads. Uh, they're going to be doing some social media for us. They're going to start making little small commercials and stuff for us. Um, they're gonna they're gonna be doing all our trades lists. They're gonna be doing offer up, monitoring our intern uh, our inventory, um, and it's gonna be a learning process for them too because they're gonna get to see uh, the whole aspects of business. And at this age, they're very excited just to be out here working and doing something. And they're actually uh, they're they're more they're easier to train because they have no preconceived notions of what's gonna happen. So uh, I think this is gonna be real really good with us doing this and as this start to pick up we're going to start opening it up to uh the shops on saturdays to have have the younger guys come in and actually start learning how to uh how to repair appliances and and let them go out and start doing some deliveries and installs also on the weekends and then by the time the summertime comes we'll have some summer jobs in there. so that that's where we're going there also um uh, I, I wanted to bring you up to date what we decided we were going to do. Uh, we, we, I told you in the, in, in the earlier video that we're actually going to have some uh, mattresses coming in. When we decided the company we're going to go with, the company we're going with is Mattress by Point. Um, we're going to bring them in in about two to three weeks. We'll have our inventory in for our mattresses. So we're going to have to rearrange our store. And what I'll do uh, next week, I'll show you how the current layout of the store is. And then in the next two to three weeks, I'll show you how we're going to um, how we're going to change the store setup so that uh, we can bring the mattresses in and how we can how we're going to start directing the traffic as it comes into the store how we're going to start directing people to places we want them to go and the prices that we want them to spend so we all get to see that too uh, the, the other thing that I want to say uh, we, was at a, we had our meeting last week uh, and we're deciding on what we wanted to do did we want to go ahead and put the mattresses in now or did we want to just uh, wait throughout this uh, tax season and let the uh, let the business itself organically build up and pay for the mattresses and, and, and pay for the new fixtures and stuff we need to have. Uh, so we, we went to a vote. Uh, all our, all our uh, the four the school business partners, uh, including myself, we went to a vote, and three of us said, well, initially. It was, it was split. It was two people wanting to go ahead and get the stuff in now, and so we can capitalize on the uh, on the tax season with the mattresses also. And the other two, uh, we didn't want to go, um, mainly because the, the company we were going to go with at first, they were going to require a larger sum of money that, had to, that we would have to invest back into the business. And also, it was going to require a two-year commitment with us. Because once you sign on to that, to get their product, you have to commit to buying so much product for two years every quarter. You had to buy so much. So I didn't want to get locked into a, a two-year commitment with that company, and I didn't want to put in the larger sum of money to go in. So uh, we went back and researched, and we found uh, found some other uh, uh, distributors that would uh, that would cost us less money, and also it wasn't no long-term commitment. So uh, we decided we'll, we'll get our feet wet with this company, and if things start to uh, really go well, the bigger companies had more options and uh, a, 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 a lot more avenues that we could go back go into in the future, as far as furniture uh, and, and, and other equipment that, that would that would that would compensate and, and accent what we currently have, uh, whereas, whereas this one only have mattresses. Uh, so if this goes well. Since there's no long-term commitment, uh, if we decide later once the revenues are up and everybody is comfortable with, with the way things are going, then we, we, we might switch over to uh, one of the other companies. And, um, and this was, the first, like I said, this is the first time I'm in a partnership with somebody. Uh, and also, the first time I worked with people, uh, and the first time I worked in a partnership, the first time I've had to, because two of my partners are from another culture, as I told y'all, they're, they're actually from India. And the first time I actually worked personally with other cultures to see how they they, 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 they conduct business. So what happened, uh, after we found a new company that we wanted to go on with, 
the, the no, it still was a unanimous decision. No, no, we still had one partner who still didn't want to didn't want to go. He 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 was saying, hey, he, he he wants to put a hold on. He got a lot of stuff coming up this summer. He got, he had other uh, him and his wife and family had other avenues that they're exploring and things they got coming up that they didn't want to shell out the money to go to go deeper in and, and have to wait for our money. So uh, I, I thought then, uh, hey, we're not gonna go because everybody not gonna put their put their money put their money in. And this this, this surprised me. What happened? The other uh, my other two partners they, they said, well we understand that um, and we understand things come up, but we friends here and, and we here to make money and and what we're gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna cover the cover cover the cost. Of, uh, of, of your portion, and once uh, once we once once we get the merchandise in, um, we'll, we'll, after after we get our after we get our initial investment back that we put in to get the merchandise in, uh, we'll get our initial investment back. But you still gonna get your profit off of everything because we friends, and, and and from time to time, everybody's gonna be in this situation, and we're not gonna say you're not gonna get none of the profit. You still gonna get all the profit that you currently get. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hold you over uh, for, for from this this round of investment. We're gonna cover the cost for you. And I, I was like, whoa, how, how in the world? <laughs> and uh, it, it actually made me, I, I couldn't believe that. I had never experienced that before. Most of the time, uh, while I'm dealing with people, if everybody ain't got the money, we say, forget it. We ain't going to, we're not going to, we're not going to do it because you ain't got your money. And we end up not doing anything and missing out on opportunities. And, and if the person didn't have that money and everybody else did, by sure, we wouldn't let them get no profit off of it. And I, I, when I saw that, I, I, it, it just, I, I, I couldn't believe, I, I, I couldn't believe that. that that never crossed my mind to say with, with, with some of my other friends, hey, I cover the cost, so they say, hey, Sneed, I cover the cost, and but we still gonna make the same profit, and then when you're a little stronger and things in a better position, uh, you, you, and you might be better than I am, you, you, you take care of me. And um, now listen to, uh, to uh, Dane Dash. A lot of people don't like Dane, but that was one of the things Dane always harped on. Um, I think even Jay Z had, a, uh, had one of those verses in his, in his rounds, saying, "Hey, uh, if everybody in your crew is tight, then uh, then everybody's great because y'all your own crutch, meaning that nobody's gonna fall. Meaning if I run into a snag." And I, everybody around me got money, then I still got money because they're gonna they're gonna carry me over to the next place where I'm okay. And I actually saw that happen. And when when I heard uh, Dane was uh, one of the things Dane was was bad about with Jay Z, he was like, uh, you know, we in it together, me, you, and Biz, and the whole crew, everybody. You shouldn't you shouldn't just walk away. You know, we we gotta stay strong for everybody. It's not just me getting money. Everybody gotta get money everybody's together and I actually saw that play out right in front of my eyes where we've done that and we say okay we're gonna make money in this thing but even though uh, you don't want to go right now you, you you got other things coming up we respect that but we right now we tight and we're gonna hold you over and we're gonna get you there and you're gonna make the same profit off of because you started off with us and uh, that was that was really amazing I really I really I, I, I couldn't believe that and the, and the other thing that uh, I, I, after that was over with, I was sitting down talking to one of my other partners, and I was just asking him, how, how do you? Because he, he has a lot of businesses and a lot of a lot of projects going on, and I was asking him, you know, how, how do you manage all your projects? Because I'm in the process of building up my, uh, my portfolio to kind of be like he is. He is. And uh, so we sat down, and had a long conversation, and he was telling me, you have to learn know know your capacity. And what he was telling me, he he can he can cover about 10 to 12 businesses. Uh, but that's that's his capacity. That's all he can do. And with within that capacity, uh, within that 10 to 12 businesses, he doesn't try to expand out to 20. But he he he, he keeps cultivating those 10 to 12 businesses. So what he does, if he got if he got 12 businesses, and, and he's looking at all of them every day. And he noticed one of them is not performing at the, at the rate that it should perform. 
then what he does, he looks for something else to replace it. He don't look to go add another business. He looks for something else to replace it, and he replaces that business, sells it, uh, or, or, or whatever he's going to do, and, and brings in something else to, to that, that has a better return. And then eventually he'll flip the business up. So if he if he, he if he currently have a uh, say for instance, they started off with a restaurant. They, they own the restaurant, they get their money out of it, uh, they get the building paid for it. The restaurant, they buy for $200,000, uh, at the end, it might be worth $1.5 million. So when it's worth $1.5 million, then they sell it, and they go buy something that's at $1.5 million and, and add value to it, they bring that up to maybe $4 or $5 million, and they keep flipping up. But they don't bring in bigger, they don't bring in more stuff that they can handle, they just keep flipping it up, if you, if you can follow me. And I, I, I had never thought about that. I thought you just go out and just keep creating as many uh, streams of income as you can. And what happens is almost like juggling. You're juggling all these businesses and all these streams of income in the air. After a while, you can't juggle any more balls. And, and you know what happens? Everything starts falling down. <laughs> because you can't keep up with all the balls you got in the air. So I, I looked at that and I looked at what I currently have, my portfolio. And I'm saying, okay, Snee. What can you constantly uh, keep your hands on and do well at, and what can you bring in? So I, 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 I later, probably next week, I'll show you my portfolio because I'm, I'm doing mine exactly like he, do, he does here, where he has like I, I, I told y'all a long time ago, he has like in the back of his car, he keeps like a, 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 a soda crate with uh, binders in there, and each binder he has he has businesses, uh, his businesses, and each one of those binders. Where, where we talking about one of his business, he'll walk to the back of his car, pull the binder for that business up, open it up, and he can show you everything in there. So he, he has a, 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 a thorough knowledge of what's happening there from day to day, from year to year. He has the picture when he first bought it. He has the picture of where he's currently at. He has the picture of where he's going with it. And he has the, the picture of where he's going to sell it at. So he knows where he's going. He has a game plan. So that's what I'm in the uh, process now of getting my businesses and uh, all my investments to be the same just like here. Um, the other thing too that, uh, that I want to go uh, and talk to you about is, is about changing. Because uh, with that, with trying to bring in new new talent in, into our uh, business and, and dealing with the old talent uh, and even talking to family and friends, I, I found out that we have a hard time dealing with change. Um, and all the time, you know, some change is not is not good, but some change is good, and we have to accept sometimes that change is happening, whether if you like it or not. Uh, and I I, 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 was, I was talking to Glendon, the guy I was telling you about, who, who, who was going back and starting the physical business, who was communicating over the internet, and he was telling me he said, yeah, what happened? And I went back and started to hire people and going through the interview process. He said, I thought it was the same like it was uh, nine, ten years ago. And he told me he kind of felt like, uh, you remember, oh, I'm going to get you sucker when when, when the pimp come out uh, and he just gets out of jail. He's been in jail for about 20 years. And he walked out and he got the uh, he got the shoes on with the fish on the bottom and he's stepping and everybody's looking at him. And he think he's fly because he's still in the same mindset of he was back in the 70s. But what happened, everything has changed and now... He, he, everybody's laughing at him, and he, he, he's out of place. That's what happens with business now. Uh, a lot of the physical businesses, uh, with social media, uh, uh, the, the, the internet, all the, it has changed the way you do business, and the millennium, uh, what they're looking for out of jobs and out of employment has changed. It's no longer they're just looking to get uh, to get a paycheck anymore, like like we were, just to get some, uh, some money. And then you do your uh, you do your social life and, and you do your uh, you do your extracurricular stuff outside of work. Uh, they want all of that to be the same, and they want to do something they feel like uh, is making a difference. So for you to tell them, oh, you just gonna come here and go to work. They they don't like that. They they want they wanted to be all encompassing where they 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 incorporate something they like socially in there. They gotta be rewarding and pay is not really up on the scale for them as as you would think. It's all the other stuff that they they're, they're more entwined to where they they feel and they they actually have no purpose out of life with with their job and they actually are having fun at their job. So he say he he had, he had to go back and, and, and look at that. And he had to go back in the house, kind of like a uh, huggy bear did. Oh, I'm gonna get you sucker and, and change up his outfit. 
I think that's what's happening with us. We want everything to stay like it was in the 80s and 90s. Uh, I personally don't listen to rap music much nowadays because uh, rap music just a, just within a genre, uh, the age group of about 18 to 25 anyway. But so many of my friends, every time I see them, whenever a new rap song come out, they're, they're complaining. It suck, it suck. It's not like it was in the 80s. It's not like, well, no, it's not. It, it, it's different. And then if I talk to my son and my daughter, uh, they saying the same thing. Oh, y'all 80s and rap, it suck, it suck. And it's not like it is the new rap. And, and we have to realize things have changed. We can't, we can't continue to woke people to constantly the way that, to keep things the way they were. They're not. And, and, and so if you think that you're going to be able to keep things exactly the way they were and time not change and stuff, you're going to be ending up with some uh, serious problems. Uh, so we actually had to change our business. We can find out the old way of selling selling stuff. Uh, it still it, it still has its place, but you got to start in uh, bringing in some of the newer stuff, and you gonna have to uh, you gonna have to start getting a presence out there uh, in social media and stuff. Cause that's where a lot of people are at. Just think, uh, uh, people don't even look at TV anymore. Uh, they 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 constantly on Facebook. They constantly online online, and they looking at those things. And you got to be there in front of them. So um, that's where we're at today. Uh, I'm going to uh, come in, like I said, the next weekend or two. I'll show you all the transition of us bringing our mattresses in, uh, how we're going to bring that in. We're going to have some high school kids that's going to be coming in. They're going to be doing some tutorials, kind of like I'm doing. They're going to be uh, doing little commercials and skits for us. They're going to they're gonna be actually learning how to run their businesses. And we're going to see how that goes. And we're going to follow that routine till the end of the year. At the end of the year, we'll see how things go. If I want to stay in it, I'll stay. Uh, if I want to go, I go. That was one of the other things I talked to my business partners about. I said, "Yeah, I, 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 I like this, and uh, I want to take it to another, another, uh, another, another city. Um, uh, but I want to do it a little different." And I said, "If I go to another city, I'm going to do that with my son. My son now has actually got an interest in wanting to work in the business and learn what I'm doing." I don't know if it's because he likes what I'm doing or is it because we're going to hire some uh, some little high school girls about the same age uh, uh, working at the store now. So now he wants to be there. I don't know. But now that I have his attention, I, I'm gonna, I, we're going to grow something together. So I said the next time I do one, it's going to be something I do with my son. And we might take it to another city. And I might I might change it up a little bit and see how that works and, and get him going there. Um, but uh, like always, thank y'all for those that join in, uh, I enjoy talking to you all. Uh, I'll talk to y'all in, in about two weeks. Thanks. Bye.